I've got a new battery for us to test today. This is a 48 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate wall mount battery from Humsainc. I may be pronouncing that incorrectly, but I'm gonna roll with it. Welcome to DIY Volts, I'm Seth. Humsainc did send over this battery for me to test out. So we're gonna unbox it, put it on the wall, do a charge test, a discharge test, and see how well it performs. As you would expect, this battery came in a big box. It's heavy, so what I did was flip it up on its side and then walk it out onto its rubber legs. I've actually not seen a wall mount battery with rubber legs before, and I have to say, great idea. I really enjoyed not worrying about having to smoosh terminals as I pulled it out of the box. Uh, then I found out later the terminals on this battery are off to the side, but uh, those feet are a nice touch on this battery. Now this battery was packaged well, except the cables rubbed through the foam on the top and left a scuff mark right in the center of the front cover, which kind of makes it look a little less attractive than it otherwise would. Here's a quick overview of all the components that come with this battery. First of all, a well-written user manual. It's got a communications cable to go from the inverter to the battery. A little bag of hardware. It's got the positive and negative battery cables with the uh, quick connect, which is nice to see. It's got some mounting hardware if you put this into a concrete wall. And then it's got the system for mounting to the wall. For instance, this is a kickstand that goes on the bottom of the battery to extend it out away from the wall. It's gonna be attaching using a French cleat style mount. So this goes to the wall like this. And then it has these clips which will attach to the battery and those will clip over that and then you can uh, adjust this to be where you need it here on the system. The front of the battery has the Hum Sciink logo right here. It's got a display. It does have a protective film over it and everything else is just nice and smooth except for that scuff where the uh, battery cables reached through that foam. All right, now this battery does weigh 110 pounds so be careful when you're moving it around. So we've got some information about the battery. It's got a foldable handle right here. Over here on the other side, we do have another foldable handle, as you can see up here at the top. It's got the communications ports. So here is your RS-485 and CAN. And over here, you've got your RS-232. You just unscrew those little pieces and you'll be able to access those ports. Now down here, you've got your connection for more batteries. This battery can be connected into a setup of 15 different batteries for a giant uh, storage solution. Power button over here. Now here are your negative and positive battery terminals. So in my case, I'm just gonna use one battery, so I'll go from uh, one of these uh, up to the inverter. There is a grounding screw right here, and then you're able to access the on and off breaker. And one nice thing about this is they have put the words on and off right there so you can easily see which direction you need to be turning that. Lastly, I'm going to spin this around so you can see how we're going to mount the mounting hardware. And we will go ahead and do that. Up here on the top, there are two holes for screws to go in on both sides. And then there is a set of screws holes down here for that kickstand. With the bag of hardware, I'm gonna get a couple of these larger bolts out of here. Use this French cleat type mount and just attach this up here using a regular screwdriver. Down here at the bottom is where this kickstand is going to go and that just kicks the battery out away from the wall so that it is not leaning in the wrong direction. And once again, just gonna use a screwdriver to get this attached. Now the battery came with this mounting hardware. I'm not able to use that here into my wooden wall. So what I'm going to do is just use a uh, washer in here and then a screw that goes into the wall. Place a level up here. Having the little feet on this battery really is convenient. I think more companies should do that for their wall mounted batteries. All right, I'm just going to lift this up and set it down here on top of this cleat. Now on the back side of the cleat, there are two screw holes where you can put this mounting hardware and that will lock this onto the cleat. For now, I'm gonna keep that off though. 
The hardest part about mounting this battery is the weight. At 110 pounds, it's just a little bit heavy. But having the French cleat hook on the back, you just pick it up and set it down on that hook and it is done. So the next step is to get the communications cable plugged up from the battery to the inverter. And then we will get the positive and negative battery cables hooked up and we will be just about ready to begin our testing of this new battery. The inverter that I have is an SRNE. So I'm going to be connecting to uh, this connector right here, which is the uh, RS485 or CAN. And then I'll just screw this together and it will make a good solid connection. The other end of this will go into the inverter. Now either one of these negatives or positives will work for connecting up to the inverter. I'm just going to pick one of them and then use the quick connect on the battery cable. So I can just snap that. You should hear a click when it makes a connection. There we go. And then I'm also going to do the same down here on the positive. Get that connected. Now obviously this is not a full install. I don't have any breakers or fuses in this. It's just simply going to be to test out whether or not this system is uh, working well with the battery. Now that I have the battery connections and the communications connections made, I'm going to press the power button here on the battery. We should get some output here. The screen is showing that the battery is on. Now I'm going to open up this breaker down here and turn on the output of the battery. The screen's a bit dark, hopefully you can see that. The inverter indicates that the battery is at 52.7 volts. Let's see what we have down here. 52.57 volts. State of charge is at 58%. Let's take a look at the display here on the battery. This is the home screen. If I select pack, we can see 58% state of charge. The current voltage, it says 52.57. And then it's got your max voltage, max temp, the current, which is zero at the moment, minimum voltage, and then we've got temperature. Uh, charging is turned on, discharging is turned on. You can look at the various cells and their uh, voltages. No alarms. Here's a chart. Currently nothing happening there. You can set. Let's see if we can find my SRNE. There we go, we should find it in here. I don't see the SRNE, so hopefully that's gonna work just fine for us. And then lastly, here's the product with just a little bit of information there. I just connected up 3000 watts of solar, so you may hear some electrical noise coming from the inverter, but it's gonna start charging the battery. Let me go ahead and turn everything back on here. Voltage on the solar is 340 volts, current 2.7 amps right now. It's very cloudy out today. We've got 200 watts coming in, so Hopefully that number jumps up soon and charges this battery. We're holding somewhere around 1.5 or 1.6 kilowatts coming in. And if you look down here, the amperage is now at about 29. There you go, about 29 amps coming in at the moment. Thanks to the solar panels outside, the battery is now at 100% state of charge. For the discharge test, I'm gonna use this small heater. I find that this runs between 1400 and 1500 watts and it usually hits a very consistent output. So we'll be using this and a timer to see how well this battery outputs over the next several hours. The inverter being on is consuming approximately one amp out of this battery. I've got a stopwatch that I'm gonna be using and we'll go ahead and turn the heater on to maximum output and then start right here. Amperage output 29.4. We are just slightly under three hours, and the state of charge is 12% uh, down here. Still pumping out, uh, looks like 31 amps right there on the display. Let me move up here real quick and see what the inverter is showing. 32 amps, so they are very close, and uh, so far, so good. Uh, let's see how much longer we can run this last uh, 
uh, 12% here on the battery. Well, I was talking on the phone and I missed it. Three hours and 14 minutes, and the battery has 6% uh, left on the state of charge, and it turned the inverter off. For my calculations, three hours and 14 minutes is spot on for when this battery should have stopped. So good deal. I think we are spot on for the discharge test. It was good to see this battery perform well in the charge and discharge test. Now, typically on this channel, I don't open up the batteries to see how the cells look unless the company asks me to, and uh, they did not ask me. So uh, things that I like about the battery, the rubber feet on the bottom make it so nice to be able to move around and set down without worrying about hitting anything important. The ability to connect this uh, to the wall using that French cleat system is fantastic. Just pick it up, set it on the wall, good to go. Having the uh, clearly marked indicators for um, the communications cable and which cable goes down to next batteries and all of that is also very nice to have. Now it was sad that it has a scuff mark here on the front. I think a little bit extra foam would have fixed that problem. Also it would have been nice to have the SRNE setting on the BMS to communicate with the inverter I've got but it seems to be working just fine regardless so very good. Well if you want to check out this inverter I will have links in the description down below. I'm Seth with DIY Volts, and I'll see you in the next video.